1965, the Indian military was recovering from a devastating loss of war with China in 1962. India had recently lost its first prime minister and had just faced a big famine. India was politically, financially and militarily weak. India was vulnerable. Ayub Khan, the president of Pakistan, Zulfikar Ali Bhutto, Pakistan's foreign minister and General Muhammad Musa Khan, the army chief of the Pakistan army, devised a plan to take advantage of the situation by launching a military campaign against India. The plan was after the defeat of India extracting major concessions from it on the issue of Kashmir. India under a strong defense minister YB Chauhan was quickly rebuilding its military and it was only a matter of time before its military became too powerful for the Pakistan military. So this was the opportunity for Pakistan to strike. The Pakistan planners however needed to validate the assumption that India was too weak to fight back before launching a large scale military campaign against it. So to test India's resolve Pakistan president Ayub Khan and army chief general Musa planned a small incursion in a run of Kutch in Gujarat India. The unresolved border issues in the region were used as a pretext to flare things up in the region. The border regions were not manned yet, so Pakistan's forces entered the Indian territory, captured Kanjar Kot and established a post there. Indian forces attempting to retake Kanjar Kot formed Sardar post about 5 kilometers south. Pakistan, anticipating an attack from the Indian forces, preempted the Indian side and attacked the Sardar post. April 9th, 1965. Owing to better logistics in the region, Pakistan military was able to bring in their armor and artillery at a very short notice and attack the Sardar post. Despite a strong showing by the Indian troops, Sardar post was captured. In its subsequent offensives, the Pakistan side captured two more posts, pushing back the lightly defended Indian defenses. Indian forces tried to form a counterattack at the Pakistan forces but were repelled. Both the sides started accumulating forces on the border. It looked like the situation would quickly escalate. So the British Prime Minister Harold Wilson offered to mediate between the two sides. Both sides not intending to escalate the conflict agreed to a resolution through diplomatic means. At the end of the mediation, both the sides agreed to bring their forces back to the status quo on January 1st, 1965. Although Pakistan made no gains during this incursion, Ayub Khan and Zulfikar Ali Bhutto were able to answer the fundamental question. How would the Indian political and military leadership respond to a military campaign by Pakistan? They concluded India lacked the political will and military resolve to fight back against a military campaign. Now, they planned an operation at a much larger scale in the Kashmir Valley, codenamed Operation Gibraltar. Under the command of GOC 12 Div, Major General Akhtar Hussain Malik, around 30,000 Pakistan Army's Special Service Group soldiers, dressed in civilian clothes, infiltrated the Kashmir Valley to stir up an uprising in the region. They were named the Gibraltar Force. Pakistan planners had intelligence reports that Kashmir was ripe for a revolution and with little help from the infiltrators, a mass uprising would be created. This would lead to India losing its grip on the valley and Pakistan would be able to snatch Kashmir from India. Unfortunate for the Pakistan planners, these intelligence reports were overly exaggerated to say the least. As reports of the infiltrators started trickling in, the Indian forces swung into action and started capturing the infiltrators. General Harbakh Singh, the Western Army commander of the Indian Army, launched targeted operations in Pakistan-occupied Kashmir at enemy sanctuaries and infiltration routes. There was a clear directive from Prime Minister Lal Bahadur Shastri and Defence Minister Y.B. Chauhan. The only way to eliminate the enemy forces was to go on the offensive and destroy the sanctuaries to the infiltrators inside POK. Most of the infiltration was taken through the Haji Peer Pass, which was also being used as a key logistic point by the enemy. This was the pass that the Indian forces had lost in the initial days of the war in 1947. 
August 26, 1965, Indian forces launched an operation to capture the Haji Pir Pass. The Indian side, with some daring attacks and display of courage, captured Haji Pir Pass along with its surrounding peaks on August 29, 1965. With Haji Pir Pass captured by the Indian forces, the Gibraltar forces' route to get reinforcements was cut off. With the enemy infiltrators isolated, soon most of them were either killed or captured by the Indian forces. Operation Gibraltar had failed. This was a major setback for the Pakistan's ambitions in the valley. Instead of cutting their losses after the failure of Gibraltar, Pakistan's GHQ doubled down on their approach and launched phase two of capturing Kashmir, codenamed Operation Grand Slam. September 1st, 1965, Pakistan forces crossed the line of control in the Chum Jorya sector with the objective of capturing the town of Aknur. Aknur is a vital communication link to the important towns of Noshera, Rajori, and Poonch up north. If Aknur was taken, the communication line to these towns would be broken and the forces here would be isolated. These formations could then be put under pressure by the enemy, forcing India to give major concessions in Kashmir to Pakistan. Based on the Karachi Accord, both sides could keep only limited number of security forces in the valley. Hence, Indian troops across Jammu and Kashmir were thinly spread. Aknur was also lightly defended. To make matters worse, the Indian intelligence failed to anticipate an attack on Aknur sector. September 1st, at 3.30 a.m., Pakistan launched Operation Grand Slam with intense artillery bombardment at Indian forward positions. This was under the command of Major General Akhtar Hussein Malik. Major General Malik was a very capable Pakistani military commander and had planned the operation very well. 8.30 a.m., they launched a thrust with the division of infantry and two regiments of armour. The armour included the extremely capable Patton tanks and Sherman tanks. The Indian troops present there fought valiantly and gave the Pakistan forces a bloody nose. But this was enough only to slow down the offensive, not to stop it. The news of the offensive shocked New Delhi and at 4.50 p.m., the Defence Minister approved the use of Indian Air Force to attack Pakistani positions. 5.19 p.m., the first of Indian force vampires and mysteries took off from Pathan Court and attacked multiple enemy targets. They also gave a tough fight to the Pakistani Air Force F-96 Sabre jets. Indian jets suffered some losses to the much more modern and capable Pakistani Sabre jets. Despite the air attacks and the courageous defense of the Indian forces in Chumb Jorya sector, it was evident that Pakistan's overwhelming force would overrun India's positions at Chumb and Jorya, and eventually Aknur. Major General Bakshi, GOC 10 Dev, appreciated that without additional troops, they may not be able to withstand the onslaught for too long. Chum and Jorya fell, and with just one more attack, Pakistan was about to take Aknur as well. There wasn't enough time for the Indian forces to induct fresh troops in the sector. September 2nd, the Indian forces at Aknur prepared their defences the best they could, with the objective of stalling the next attack and buying enough time for reinforcements to arrive. The attack was expected to come in the early hours of September 2, but it never came. The Pakistan planners took a very controversial decision. At 1 p.m. on September 2nd, Pakistani Army Chief General Musa decided to replace the commander of Operation Grand Slam, General Akhtar Hussein Malik, with General Yahya Khan. In their estimation, Aknur was all but taken. Whoever won the town would be hailed in Pakistan as a national hero and without doubt would be the next army chief. Ayub Khan wanted his protege, General Yahya Khan, to get this honour. So they made the change at the last minute. General Yahya Khan took command of Operation Grand Slam on September 2nd and instead of pressing ahead on Aknur, ordered his forces to wait and prepare for a counter-attack by the Indian forces. Not aware of the ground realities that well, Yahya miscalculated the Indian strength at Aknur and wasted time preparing defences for a counter-attack. This gave the Indian forces a crucial 36 hours to induct more troops into Aknur and strengthen their defences. By the time Yahya's attack came in at 7pm next day on September 3, the Indian forces had strengthened their positions and were able to hold off the enemy from overrunning Aknur. 
fighting continued for Akhnur for another day and by September 4th it looked again that Pakistan forces would overrun Indian positions by September 6th the indian side had to find another way to ease the pressure on akhnur this is where the indian side launched their plan of last resort crossing the international border and threatening pakistan's most important city lahore this was code named operation riddle fighting continued for akhnur for another day and by september 4th it looked again that pakistan forces would overrun indian positions by september 6th the indian side had to find another way to ease the pressure on akhnur this is where the indian side launched their plan of last resort crossing the international border and threatening pakistan's most important city lahore this was code named operation riddle the indian planners had war gamed this very scenario a situation where pakistan forces overwhelm indian positions in kashmir india could launch an offensive towards lahore this would make the pakistan planners redirect a portion of their force from their offensive towards the defense of lahore easing the pressure in kashmir the biggest obstacle for the indian offensive towards lahore was the ichogil canal developed as a defense to the city for the indian forces to threaten lahore they had to neutralize the defense forces from the border till the east of ichogil canal create a bridge head across the canal and accumulate enough forces on its west side to have a realistic chance of threatening lahore the objective was not to capture lahore but just to threaten it it was however extremely crucial that the enemy believed that lahore was under real threat of attack only then it will move their forces away from a successful ongoing offensive towards the defense of lahore with the indian forces under immense pressure at akhnur india's 11th corps initiated the offensive towards lahore at 4 pm on september 6 three jat of the indian forces vigorously attacked the enemy defenses along the amritsar lahore axis and overwhelmed them by 6:30 am their objective now was to capture a town in the outskirts of lahore on the east of ichogil canal the town of dograi as they approached dograi the positions were attacked by the f86 sabers of the pakistan air force three jat took some major losses but the commanding officer colonel desmond haid did not let the morale of the unit drop they continued their advance and attacked the enemy forces stationed on the east side of the canal the enemy put up a fierce resistance but withdrew across to the west side by 11:30 am owing to the brave fierce attacks by the jats dograi was in indian control three jat then moved across the ichogil canal and captured the town of patapur within 8 hours of the launch of the offensive the indian troops were across the most formidable pakistani obstacle and were within striking distance of lahore hearing the news of the indian troops crossing the ichogil canal pakistan ghq panicked and eased their offensive on akhnur to divert forces towards lahore operation riddle had worked unfortunately the rapid progress of three jat could not be pressed further the other units on the offensive had suffered some major setbacks and could not provide reinforcements to three jat to strengthen their force across the bridge head pakistan forces launched multiple counter attacks at three jat positions but all were repelled eventually the pakistan side initiated a major attack with armor support three jat with no reinforcements in sight had to move back to the eastern bank of ichogil canal meanwhile the indian offensive had suffered major losses due to consistent attacks from the pakistan air force many indian units suffered major setbacks during the offensive goc 15 dev major general niranjan prasad provided the report of operations to general harbak singh he received orders from general harbak singh to push forward and secure a bridge over ichogil canal by first light of september 7th more attempts were made to secure ichogil canal till september 8th but due to a resolute defense and aggressive counter attacks by the pakistan forces this objective could not be achieved major general prasad was then removed from the command of 15 div and was replaced by major general mohinder singh the same night from september 8th to september 10th the indian offensive had some major setbacks with their lines breaking through the enemy counter attacks 
the vital city of Amritsar was now exposed to an enemy attack on it, more Indian forces were moved forward to protect Amritsar. Meanwhile, on the night of September 7th, India's One Corps initiated an armor offensive towards the strategically important town of Sialkot. Sialkot served as a supply point for the Chum sector and the railway line from Sialkot to Basrur was crucial for Pakistan's defense. This was codenamed Operation Nepal. On the same morning, September 8th, Pakistan surprised the Indian side with an armor offensive from Kasur towards Khemkaran, with the objective of outflanking the Indian forces targeting Lahore and threatening Amritsar. This was Pakistan's pride, their first armor division with the M47 and M48 Patton tanks, the most modern and the most capable tanks of the time. Facing them were the much older World War II vintage Indian Sherman and Centurion tanks. As the offensive pushed forward, the Indian forces in Khemkaran formed a defensive posture and quickly flooded the fields to impose movement restrictions on the incoming force. Four grenadiers dug in to stall the enemy's advance until Indian armor elements could reinforce them. They started hunting the Pakistan tanks using RCL guns and forced the enemy to retreat multiple times. The brave and courageous efforts of four grenadiers stalled the enemy offensive for two days. This gave two Indian armor brigades enough time to organize themselves and meet the enemy at Bikivind. Pakistan's first armor division outflanked the Indian defenses and moved forward towards its objective. India's three cavalry and nine Deccan horse with the Centurion tanks was waiting for it right there. They destroyed many enemy tanks during the battle and thwarted every enemy attempt to get past them. The Pakistan 1st Armored Division suffered extremely heavy losses in their attempt to push past the Indian defense lines. By the evening of September 10th, as a result of strong counterattacks by the Indian armor groups, Pakistan had suffered very heavy losses. The offensive had lost steam, so they dropped the offensive and retreated to Kasur. During the battle, Pakistan lost 97 tanks, out of which 72 were captured by the Indian forces. India lost 5. India gave a decisive blow to the ambitious armoured offensive of Pakistan. This battle was acknowledged as the biggest tank battle after the Second World War. In the Sialkot sector, early morning of September 8th, India's 1st Armoured Division crossed into Pakistan territory towards Vilona with the objective of capturing Javinda. Realizing the severe threat posed to Sialkot, the Pakistan side rushed two regiments of armour from Cham. With this, all the hopes of Pakistan offensive capturing Akhnur were gone. Fierce tank battles ensued between the Indian and Pakistan armoured groups in Filora, leading to what was termed as another large tank battle after World War II. After multiple daring attempts, the Indian armor group was able to break through the Pakistan defenses at Filora on September 11th, 1965. The next target was Chavinda. The Indian forces continued towards Chavinda and mounted multiple attacks on enemy positions. The Indian offensive, however, was bogged down due to a much stronger resistance put up by the enemy in Chavinda. By now, both sides had inducted most of their elements into the war and this had become a war of attrition with no major changes expected. The war continued with minor gains and losses in territory for the next nine days. The war was getting to a stalemate-like situation with no side making any major gains. On September 20, 1965, the United Nations Security Council unanimously passed a resolution demanding an unconditional ceasefire from both the nations within 48 hours. Both sides accepted resolution. Indian Prime Minister Lal Bahadur Shastri and Pakistan President Ayub Khan signed the Tashkent Agreement on January 10, 1966, agreeing to withdraw their forces to pre-August.